Welcome back everyone. Today we have Afrin again, who will be talking about movement into and out of cells for um, IGCC biology. So how about you go? Let's, let's get right into it. Yeah. Hello. Okay, so this is chapter four in, no, chapter three in IGCC biology. Uh, we'll be looking at three main processes here. And the first part of chapter three talks about diffusion. So in the syllabus, the syllabus states that you need to know the def definition of diffusion. You need to know why diffusion is important in organisms. And you need to know about the factors affecting rate of diffusion. So to start with the definition. So this is something you need to memorize. And it's usually a straightforward question. Uh, you they'll ask you to define it or in the MCQ paper, they might give you multiple definitions and you have to choose the correct one. So diffusion is the net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration down the concentration gradient. Uh, and it is a result of random movement of the particles. You need to know where the... So this is basically the kinetic energy of the random movement of the particles. So this could also come in MCQ or in paper four, that's the structured questions. And then most, um, you, if you remember from the previous chapter that all, all cells have cell membranes and basically they control the move particles that move into and out of these cells. Uh, this is usually done by diffusion and the size of the particles. Now, the important thing about diffusion is diffusion will occur till equilibrium is reached. So the particles move randomly till equilibrium is reached. Now, what's equilibrium? Essentially, it's when the concentration of that substance is equal on both sides of the part of the membrane. So that's the goal that diffusion achieves. They want uh, it needs to it achieves equilibrium by the random movement of particles. Okay. So why do we need? Uh, why do organisms need diffusion? Diffusion of gases and solutes is important because substances like carbon dioxide and oxygen diffuse in our lungs, and that's how we uh, we get a fresh supply of oxygen and remove the excess carbon dioxide, uh, all of the carbon dioxide. And also in the kidneys, in the nephrons, you learn in another chapter, but for now you need to know that substances move, uh, toxic substances and excess substances are filtered out of the blood through diffusion. Uh, now you need to know the factors affecting diffusion. And there are three main factors, larger concentration gradient, higher temperature, and larger surface area. Now what's larger concentration gradient? That's basically when the difference in concentration between two um, areas are greater. So uh, when the, the are the difference yeah so difference in concentration is greater so in these in this uh, circumstance the particles will move faster so for example um there are two rooms right one is heavily saturated with perfume and there's a door separating the two rooms when you open the door the perfume particles are going to move to the other room where there's no uh perfume right so when there's a little perfume in the other room, that rate is going to be slower. So basically, you need to know that when the difference in concentration is greater, the rate is faster. And then there's higher temperature. Why does higher temperature affect the rate of diffusion? Basically, when the temperature is higher, particles have a greater kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the main uh, source of energy over here, right? So if the, kin num uh, the kinetic energy is greater, rate of diffusion is also greater. And then larger surface area. So this one's kind of self-explanatory. So uh, imagine a beaker. You have a narrow beaker and a wide beaker, right? And you drop paint into it. It's it con The beaker, beakers contain plain water, distilled water, nothing else. And then you drop paint into it. Um, if you uh, drop it over, you drop the same amount of paint. However, in the larger beaker, you drop it over a wide surface area while in the narrow beaker you drop it over a narrow, smaller surface area the diffusion will be faster in the beaker with the wider surface area so yeah that's about it and then we have osmosis so in this part of the syllabus you need to know about what is osmosis you need to know how to define it 
and then you need to know the role of water because osmosis has uh, everything to do with water and yeah that's about it so osmosis is essentially diffusion but with water so it's the net movement of water pot, uh, water molecules from a region of high water potential that is a region of um, that's a dilute solution to a region of lower water potential that's a concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane now you need to mention both the points that is the net movement of water and the through a partially permeable membrane part to get two marks because this usually comes from two mark question um well, why is, why does it specify partially permeable because this process is unique to water so that's why that part is important and the second um the first part higher water potential this is a dilute solution so you again let's take two beakers same size same volume of water um and then you put a partially permeable membrane uh, into it a, a, a bag a piping bag with a partially permeable membrane and then this is a salt solution so the water movement will be from the beaker to what inside the salt solution right so do you get what i mean because the the what concentration of water is greater outside the bag so that's why the water will try to move inside the bag to try to balance the difference once again the goal over here is to achieve equilibrium uh both the the concentration on both sides of the membrane has to be equal okay so why do we need water um water is needed for many processes in the body uh for digestion what nutrients are dissolved in water so that they're assimilated into the cells assimilated basically means when the nutrient molecules are um uh, they enter our cells and become part of our cells uh, you'll learn more about this in detail in chapter 7 that's human nutrition and then in excretion water is also needed in excretion so um excess molecules excess sub substances like salts or toxic materials like um urea they are dissolved in water and then they're processed in the kidney and then removed through the ureter so this is again something you'll learn more in detail about in another chapter um and then there's uh all right so this is the point we already discussed water moves through a partially permeable membrane this is an important point so try not to miss that out and then plants are supported by water pressure inside the cells pressing out outwards of the cell cell wall um so if you remember from the previous chapter we learned the parts of the cells and so if you look into the plant cells plant cells have a cell wall and if you remember the purpose of the cell wall it's to basically provide provide the cell with protection and with uh, extra support so if there is excess of water inside the cell will not burst so um this is something we'll elaborate here so um okay let's start with the first part when the concentration of solute that is substances like salt or sand is greater uh, is equal to the concentration inside the cell so there's no difference in concentration the both the concentration are equal there will be no change in size of the cell so over here we're talking about animal and plant cells um so there will be no change in cells uh, in the cell size now the second example says concentration of solute like salts um is greater outside of the cell than inside of the cell so the water will move from inside towards outside the net movement of water is outwards of cell so the cell shrinks because the water content decreases and this is known as plasmolysis this process is known as plasmolysis or you can say that the cell has been plasmolyzed so this is something you can learn or you can just say cell, the cell shrinks um yeah and that's about that and then the third example is the concentration of solute outside of the cell is great uh, is less than the concentration of cell uh is greater is less than the concentration inside of the cell so the salt concentration inside the cell is more than what it is uh, than the concentration outside so the water net water movement is towards the cell inside the cell right so the volume of water inside the cell increases and the cell grows in size so the cell swells to become turgid so this is a word you need to remember turgid um to describe the condition of the cell at that point now we differentiate between the animal cells and the plant cells so 
if you remember, uh, animal cells have no cell wall, so there's no extra protection. So when the third condition is true for animal cells, that is the water concentration is greater uh, outside. So the water moves inside the animal cell and then the animal cell grows uh, to the point where it bursts because there's nothing providing the extra support like a cell wall. In plants, however, for the same case, the, um, the plant cell grows and swells up to become rigid, um, turgid. It doesn't burst because of the support provided by the cell wall. However, when you decrease the water concentration, uh, when you decrease the volume of water, okay, the cell becomes um, smaller, it shrinks, it uh, plasmolysis occurs, and the cell body sort of separates from the cell wall, and the cell wall kind of um, sinks inside, and the cell wall cell becomes flaccid. And that's about osmosis. So. Osmosis and diffusion are similar for the most part. It is about how the particles move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration to reach equilibrium. Now, active transport, however, is kind of different. Uh, active transport is the movement of particles through a cell membrane from a region of lower concentration to, one, to a region of higher concentration uh, against a concentration gradient using energy from respiration. So by now, you should have noticed two differences. Uh, first of all, over here, the movement is from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. This is opposite of what we've been learning for diffusion and osmosis. And over here, the energy does not come from the random movement of the particle. The energy comes from respiration. So basically, the energy you are, um, the energy released from the molecules, uh, re released from nutrients in your cells, that energy is being used for this process. The, act trans the process of active transport that's happening in your body um, to yeah to basically carry out the process. So there are two main differences. It's nothing like osmosis or diffusion. Um, so try not to get confused with that because this is something people get confused with. Uh, okay, so this process is usually used in our kidneys when um, the, the glucose is reabsorbed from the urine. This is something you'll learn more in detail about in another chapter. Uh, over here, you need to know that uh, plant roots, they absorb nutrients by active transport because the concentration of nutrients is greater in the plant than the soil itself. So the uh, nutrients are moving against the gradient that is from lower to higher concentration. And for this, this is not happening naturally it's not ha the energy does not uh, is not provided by the molecules themselves so uh, the energy produced in the plant is used in absorbing the nutrients from the soil by active transport uh, another thing you need to know is for active transport you need protein carriers to move molecules or ions across a membrane uh, and this is something you don't need to know too much about in detail you just need to know the statement basically uh, protein carriers move molecules or ions from a membrane, uh, across a membrane. Um, okay, yeah, so that's about that. Uh, you'll get questions in paper two, that's the MCQ paper. You'll, um, once again, they'll give you a list of definitions and you have to choose the correct one. And they'll, um, they might give you some a, a scenario, maybe, okay, so these nutrients are being absorbed by this plant. What is the process yeah, occurring here? So that's the kind of questions you should be accept, um, expecting. And yeah, that's that. Now let's look at some example questions. Okay, so this is October, November 21, 2021. The cells in a plant root have a higher concentration of magnesium ions than in the surrounding soil. Oh, this is like the example I gave you. Which process will move the magnesium ions into the root? So basically they said, that the cells in the plant root, the, the concentration of magnesium is greater in the cells of the plant root than in the soil. So the move, but how, however, the process needed here is that the, moly, the nutrient has to move from the soil to the plant root. Um, so this should, this should ring a bell that it's, the energy does not come by itself. The plant is using its own energy and it's moving from a concentration of 
from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. So it is active transport. Okay, this is February, March, 2018. Protoplasts are plant cells that have had their cell walls removed. Cell walls, you should think about maybe osmosis. Yes, you should be thinking about osmosis. Um, what happens if protoplasts are placed in distilled water? Um, okay, so distilled water, so the concentration of solute is greater inside the cell than outside. So the water movement should be towards the cell. So the volume of water is increasing inside the cell. So if the water volume is increasing, they get larger. Uh, so there are two possible answers, A or B. They get larger, they get larger. Now, if you have to notice that the question states that the cell walls have been removed, right? So it can't get turgid. It's supposed to burst because that extra support, extra protection is not there. So the answer should be D. Yes, it is B. The cell walls get, uh, the plant cell gets larger and it bursts. Okay, this is February, March, 2019. Which process only involves the movement of water through the partially permeable membrane of a cell? So this is movement of water, partially permeable, straightforward, easy mark. Uh, this should be osmosis and the answer is C. Okay, and that's chapter three. All right, um, again, another pretty short chapter, nice and sweet. Uh, next, um, next week, um, Afrin will be talking about um, biological molecules, so stay tuned for that. Um, otherwise, do you have any concluding remarks? Uh, not really, just this, this one's simple, straightforward, should be easy to learn, good luck. <laughs> All right, um, well, see you next week then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right, bye.